Hello and welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast. You know us, your one-stop shop for all things HIV testing in the U.S., but today we're taking you beyond the tests themselves. We're diving deep into something that could change the entire landscape of HIV, the race for a vaccine. A vaccine is the holy grail, isn't it? The ultimate goal for really tackling this virus. Exactly. And we're basing this deep dive on a fascinating article from WebMD called How Soon Will There Be an HIV Vaccine? They really break down where the science is at, what the hurdles are, and what the future might hold. You know, whenever I read about HIV vaccine research, it always makes me wonder, are we talking about a vaccine that would prevent people from getting HIV in the first place? Or are we talking about something that would help people who are already living with the virus? That's a great question. And it gets right to the heart of the different types of vaccines being researched. You're right, there are two main categories, preventative and therapeutic. A preventative vaccine would be like the flu shot, you get it before you're exposed, and it helps your body build up defenses to fight off the virus if you ever encounter it. A therapeutic vaccine, on the other hand, is designed for people who are already living with HIV. It wouldn't get rid of the virus entirely, but it could help their immune systems keep it under control. So with a therapeutic vaccine, could people stop taking their HIV medications? That's the ultimate hope you see current HIV treatments, while incredibly effective, aren't a cure. They require people to take medication every single day, often for the rest of their lives, and that comes with challenges. Side effects cost and the risk of the virus developing resistance to the drugs. And I know from talking to so many people through the HIV RNA test guide that access to healthcare and medications isn't equal everywhere, even within the U.S. Mm, absolutely. So while we've made incredible strides in HIV treatment, a vaccine, either preventative or therapeutic, could truly revolutionize the way we approach this virus. It feels like scientists have been searching for an HIV vaccine forever. Why is it so hard to develop one? I mean, we have vaccines for so many other viruses. It's a question that has baffled researchers for decades. HIV is a particularly sneaky virus. For one thing, it mutates incredibly fast. It's like trying to hit a moving target just when your immune system thinks it has the virus figured out, it changes its appearance. So it's constantly shape-shifting. Exactly, and that makes it very difficult to develop a vaccine that can recognize and target all the different variations of the virus. Okay, I'm starting to see why this is such a challenge. But that's not all. HIV also attacks the very cells of our immune system that are supposed to fight it off. It's like it's sabotaging our defenses from within. That's seriously devious. No wonder scientists haven't cracked the code yet. It is, it really is. But despite these challenges, there are some promising avenues of research being explored. One area that has scientists really excited is something called broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs for short. Okay, I'm all ears. What are DNABs and why are they such a big deal? Think of it this way. Imagine you have a lock that can only be opened by one specific key. Now imagine a master key that can open not just that lock, but a whole bunch of different locks, even ones with slightly different designs. That's what BNABs are like for HIV. They're antibodies that can recognize and block a wide range of HIV strains, even as the virus mutates and tries to change its appearance. So they're like super-powered antibodies, sign me up. Yeah. But seriously, that's a game changer. So mm -hmm. are we talking about a cure here? Can we just inject people with these master keys and be done with HIV? Well, it's not quite that simple. Unfortunately, while some people living with HIV do naturally develop these BNABs, it usually happens too late in the course of the infection to make a real difference. Their immune systems figure out how to make these amazing antibodies, but the virus has already gained a foothold. That's heartbreaking, but you're saying researchers are working on harnessing the power of these BNABs. Exactly. They've been able to isolate these BNABs from people who produce them naturally and are now studying how to engineer them into vaccines, both therapeutic and preventative. So instead of waiting for our bodies to maybe possibly figure out how to make these BNABs on their own, scientists are trying to give our immune systems a head start. That's a great way to put it, and that's not the only approach being investigated. The WebMD article also talks about something called mosaic-based vaccine regimens. Mosaic vaccines. Okay, now you're just making stuff up. What in the world are those? They're actually really cool. I think of a beautiful mosaic artwork. It's made up of all these different little pieces that come together to create a bigger picture. Mosaic vaccines work in a similar way. They combine pieces of different HIV strains, almost like a puzzle. So instead of just showing the immune system one version of the virus, it's like showing it a whole photo album of different variations. Yeah. Exactly. The idea is to train the immune system to recognize and fight off a wider range of HIV strains, no matter how much the virus tries to shapeshift. It's like giving the immune system a full arsenal of weapons to combat HIV. I love that analogy. <laughs> so are there actual clinical trials happening with these mosaic vaccines? 
There are, and they're showing some real promise. In fact, there are two large-scale trials going on right now to see how effective these mosaic vaccines are in preventing HIV infection. This is really exciting stuff. I'm feeling optimistic, but the WebMD article mentioned another trial called pre-PVAC. What's that all about? Ah, pre-PVAC is a fascinating study. It's like a combination platter of different approaches. Hmm. It's testing two different experimental vaccine combinations, one that uses HIV's own DNA to trigger an immune response, and another that uses a modified smallpox virus as a delivery system. I mean, smallpox, isn't that like a really scary virus? Yeah. It was, but it's been eradicated thanks to vaccines, and now scientists are taking what we learned from smallpox and applying it to HIV. They're using a modified version of the smallpox virus, which is harmless to humans, to deliver pieces of HIV into the body. It's like using a Trojan horse to sneak the HIV defenses into our immune system. That's pretty brilliant. It is. It's a testament to the incredible creativity and dedication of the scientists working on this problem. So with all this research happening, does that mean we're close to having an HIV vaccine? The WebMD article suggested that we could see one within a decade. Is that realistic? I show their optimism, but a decade is still a long time in the world of science. There's still a lot of work to be done. So we're not popping champagne corks just yet. Not quite, but the progress being made is definitely cause for hope. You've been amazing at breaking all of this down. I know our listeners appreciate it. I know I do. But before we get to our final thoughts, I have one more question for you. You've explained why developing an HIV vaccine is so challenging, and we've talked about all the promising research underway, but I'm still curious. What makes HIV so different from other viruses for which we already have vaccines like measles, mumps, rubella? We got those handled. So why is HIV such a tougher nut to crack? That's a great question. It really highlights the unique challenges of HIV. You see most viruses like the ones you mentioned, measles, mumps, rubella, they trigger a strong immune response in our bodies once we've been infected or vaccinated. Our immune system remembers that virus and knows how to fight it off if we ever encounter it again. That's how vaccines work. So it's like our immune system has a memory bank of all the viruses it's encountered before. Exactly. But HIV is different. Remember how we talked about it constantly changing its appearance? Well, that makes it really hard for our immune system to develop a lasting memory of the virus. And on top of that, HIV attacks the very cells that are supposed to be creating that immune memory, the CD4 plus T cells. So it's like HIV is wiping out the librarians in the immune system's memory bank. That's a great analogy. And without those librarians, the immune system can't mount an effective defense against the virus, even if it's encountered it before. Wow, that makes so much sense. Yeah. So even if we do develop an HIV vaccine, will it be like the measles vaccine where you get it once and you're protected for life? Or will it be something that needs to be updated regularly like the flu shot? That's a question researchers are still trying to answer because HIV mutates so rapidly, it's possible that an HIV vaccine might need to be tweaked or boosted over time to keep up with the changing virus. But we won't know for sure until we have a vaccine to test. Well, this has been a fascinating deep dive. I know I've learned a lot and I'm sure our listeners have too. So to wrap things up, what are the key takeaways you want our listeners to remember about the quest for an HIV vaccine? I think the most important takeaway is that while there are huge challenges in developing an HIV vaccine, there's also a lot of hope. Scientists are making incredible progress, exploring new approaches, and we're getting closer to that goal all the time. I'm feeling that hope too. And I think it's so important for people to understand that HIV research is ongoing. It's not something that's happening in a vacuum. No. So for our listeners out there, what can they do to stay informed and engaged in the fight against HIV? There are so many ways to get involved. You can follow organizations like the National Institutes of Health or the International AIDS Society to stay up to date on the latest research. You can support organizations that are working to develop an HIV vaccine or to provide care and support to people living with HIV. And of course, you can keep listening to amazing podcasts like this one. Well said. And remember, knowledge is power. The more we understand about HIV, the better equipped we are to fight it. So to all the listeners out there, thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the search for an HIV vaccine. And until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and stay well.